Hello, partner schools. My name is Cole Agar from Peking University in China, and I'm putting together this video to help give your students a little bit more information um, about our School of Transnational Law to maybe help them make a decision about whether they might want to study with us. So I guess to do this, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the school, where we're located, the types of courses your students could take, um, as well as other activities they could be involved in, um, the facilities that we have on campus, and finally, what would be the dates that they could potentially study with us. So Peking University, is the oldest university in China. And if you look us up on something like Times Higher Education or you know QS World University Rankings, you will find that we are actually one of the top ranked universities in the world. So while our main campus is located in Beijing, China's capital, our School of Transnational Law is actually located in Shenzhen, which today is sort of China's tech capital. And it's, it's actually a really interesting place to, to see and to experience today in China. So this is Shenzhen from about a generation ago. And, you know, watch, watch closely because this is Shenzhen today. Um, it's been one of the fastest growing cities in China, one of the most successful cities in China, and it is actually considered by China today to be a model city for the country. Um, as I mentioned, it's really become the uh, kind of the tech hub of China, and it's, it's really a place because of its success that has come to attract uh, people from all over China. So it's a very young population. Um, it's a largely educated population. And you will find, you know, food and dialects from every part of China meeting together in Shenzhen. And, and so really kind of it's, it's an area where you'll find this meeting of, of new and old in terms of what's going on in China, China's history, and what's really happening today in China. And, you know, as I mentioned, today it's, it's the tech capital. It's sort of the Silicon Valley of China. Um, it's the city in China that produces the most intellectual property. Um, it's where a lot of China's kind of big international companies are based. Um, so companies like Tencent and Huawei. Um, so it's a really fascinating place to observe. Uh, we are also the sister city to Hong Kong. Um, so we share a border with Hong Kong. Uh, which is, you know, it's kind of another cool aspect of the location. Um, when I fly into Shenzhen, I actually will often fly into Hong Kong. Um, and it's just, it's a really kind of dynamic, fast-paced part of the world today. So definitely something worth checking out if you, uh, if you come visit. Okay, so if you end up coming to our campus, what types of courses can you take? So there's good news here. Um, we actually have a really wide variety of courses. We were the first uh, law school ever to be established in China with English as a primary language of instruction. So what that means for international students is that, you know, we don't just have kind of a, a little selection of courses that we have in English for international students. No, rather our, you know, really kind of the majority of our curriculum is based in English for both our Chinese students and our international students. Um, you know, that said, our, our maybe focus areas, the areas that we are strongest in, are things like um, Chinese law, common law, international law, comparative law, commercial and business law, uh, intellectual property, and areas of legal practice. Um, so just an example maybe of some courses that are often popular with our international students, um, things like foreign direct investment in China, 
um, cross-cultural negotiations, um, as well as a lot of courses in areas like, you know, international trade or, you know, WTO, things like that. Um, if you want to see some more information uh, or details of different types of courses we have, if you pause this video and scan that QR code up in the corner, you can scroll down and you'll see a list of our different focus areas, and you can click on any of those to get more information about the courses in that area. Uh, another thing that's interesting if you, if you come and join the program um, and study with us is you can also study Chinese language classes, and you can even take other things kind of outside the realm of law just for fun, so things like painting classes or, you know, Chinese calligraphy. Um, and in that same vein, there are actually a lot of other activities you can be involved in on campus as well. So, you know, clubs, festivals, different outings and field trips are all things that you might get to do also while you're on campus. So in terms of clubs, last I heard, we had more than 50 different clubs and associations on campus. Um, these are not specific to any school. You could be in the law school and do any of these clubs. Uh, boxing association is always very popular. Rock climbing club is one of my favorites, but there's a lot of different. I mean, some more academic, some less academic. It's really up to you. Um, there's also a lot of festivals on campus. We are an international faculty, so you'd find both things like the American Thanksgiving being celebrated, um, but also, you know, Mooncake Festival and, you know, the Chinese New Year, of course, um, as well as kind of other things like, you know, karaoke competitions or, you know, uh, talent shows, things like that, which are just, you know, a fun way to meet other friends. Um, you'll also find different outings, some organized by the law school, some by the campus in general. Um, so, you know, biking trips, hiking trips, uh, you know, going out for barbecue on the beach, things like that, which are a lot of fun, um, as well as things that can be a little more career specific or law specific. Um, so maybe visiting different tech companies in Shenzhen, um, visiting the legal department at some of these big Chinese companies, maybe visiting a court or a legal think tank in the city. Um, so there's a lot of different things like that that you can do outside of the classroom to make the, you know, the experience in China more fun. Of course, you're also welcome to travel, um, you know, traveling if you have a long weekend or a holiday is, is really one of the most amazing things you can do in China as well. Uh, in terms of our facilities, you know, if you want some, some more details, again, you can pause and scan that QR code. Typically, the most important uh, issue to a lot of students is where can they live, you know, coming in as an international student. And we have dorms right on campus. Um, for one semester, it's only about 400 euro, so it's, it's pretty affordable. Um, you know, that comes with a private bathroom, you get a little balcony, the downstairs area around the dorms has cafes and, ca you know, kind of canteens, like cafeterias, so you have food options. Um, right around that area as well, there's a lot of different athletic options, whether you want to work out in the gym or swim play soccer, you know, tennis, badminton, kind of, you name it, there's, you know, something in our different sports facilities to accommodate your interest. Uh, we have a very large library for the entire campus. We also have a smaller library specifically for the law school. Uh, here's a little map of our section of campus. That big library you just saw is this long skinny building on the end. Um, the law school building is just a short walk through a park from the dormitory, so it's very convenient. One of my favorite things is this river that you see right here. This river actually stretches all the way to the Shenzhen Bay. It's about 10 kilometers, and there are hiking, biking trails all along the way. It's one of my favorite runs in the city, so that's something you can check out in your free time. 
Um, and another interesting thing about the way that our campus is set up is that I mentioned that this is just our part of campus. So we're actually based in a small university town with two other universities. So there's a lot of other student activities and students around. Um, and then we have two metro stops uh, kind of right at the university town on two different sides of it. So if you want to get out and see the city, travel, um, it's very easy to do right from campus. So here is a, a small virtual video with a comment from a couple of our former students at the end. If I've set this up correctly, it should play. My name is Nicholas. I joined STL in August 2017 to pursue my master's in law. STL's LM program stood out from other law schools in China because it offered a transnational law course curriculum and it is all taught in English. STL offers a platform. It's a good opportunity for any foreign student who wants to you know, progress their career. Coming to STL has been the best personal and professional decision I have made. For the foreign students, I'll tell you this. Opportunities are in the East. And if you're talking about the East, you're talking about China. So, right now, you cannot avoid the narrative that China is a big player. Well, I hope that was useful. Uh, the two students that you hear make comments at the end there are actually LLM students. Um, but I think everything that they say about the value of studying in China today and kind of the undeniable reality today that China is just this huge player on the world stage 
really applies equally to any, you know, study abroad student interested and coming and, you know, spending a semester with us as well. So talking about uh, coming for a semester, the dates of our program are right here. And, you know, so our fall semester is around mid-August to mid-January. Um, our spring semester is mid-February to early July, but we actually use a quarter system, meaning each of these semesters is divided up into two smaller terms of about 10 weeks. So it is actually possible, depending on what fits your, your own uh, academic calendar back home, um, or just sort of the time that you have available to do a study abroad, it is potentially possible to come for a shorter period if that's what works for you. Um, I hope this was useful. If you have other questions, um, you should be able to get contact information for me or one of my colleagues uh, from the office at your home university. Feel free to email us, uh, you know, anytime if you have other questions. And have a good rest of your day.